The topic is the method of partial fractions. This is really the last of our advanced integration techniques, the techniques that we're going to use to find uh, antiderivatives of different types of functions. So uh, the real goal of this topic is to be able to integrate rational functions. Usually we're talking about fairly complex rational functions where it's one very ugly polynomial over another very ugly polynomial. So um, essentially the, uh, the, the way this works is that algebra teaches us that we can decompose a rational function into fairly simple components. And fortunately, calculus then teaches us that we know the antiderivatives of these very simple components. So uh, just for example, um, let's take a look at that one. Uh, we certainly know, for example, that if I gave you the, uh, the problem, find the antiderivative of x plus 1,003, you would simply know that this is equal to ln of x plus 1,003 plus c. Um, similarly, with a little bit more work, you could you could discover that uh, the antiderivative of x plus, let's make it a little bit lower, 93, the antiderivative of 1 over quantity x plus 93 squared is equal to negative 1 over x plus 93 plus c. And, oops, sorry, with a little bit more work, we could discover, and we, we will do this, uh, with a little more work, we could discover that the uh, antiderivative of x squared plus 9 is equal to 1 over 3 arctangent of, sorry, that's antiderivative of x squared plus 9, if I didn't say that, is equal to uh, 1 third arctangent of uh, x over 3 plus c. So if we could dec decompose a rational function into these fairly simple types of components, then we'd be able to we'd be able to, to just add them up and find a complete antiderivative. So let me show you what the rules are, and this is a little bit abstract, but it'll become more clear as uh, it, it'll become more clear as we as we work with the examples. So if we assume that p of x is some polynomial, and, and recall that a polynomial is something like you know ax to the fifth plus bx to the fourth plus cx cubed plus dot 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 all the way down to c d e f i guess we'll call that f i've labeled them a1 a2 and a3 here but it's it's the same uh, it's the same idea so uh, you know polynomial looks like it looks like that it's just integer powers of x multiplied by some coefficient and added together so uh, if i have such a polynomial uh, as long as the degree of the polynomial is less is less than the degree of the denominator. And when I say the degree, I mean the highest power that appears in the polynomial. So that's what the term degree means. As long as that is true, I can and, and as long as the the denominator decomposes into what we're going to call linear factors. In other words, they're, they're the highest power in each of these factors is one. Then I can decompose it this way. I can simply put constant over linear factor one, then another constant over linear factor two, another constant over linear factor three. If it turns out that I have a, a repeated linear factor where I have something like like this, uh, where I take one linear factor and raise it to a power, the rule is slightly more complicated. Again, we'll we'll see how that works. But just as an example, if I have let's say um, x over x plus one, x plus two x plus 3, what I know from algebra, since the degree of the denominator is going to be a, the power of x times times 3, the degree here is, is equal to 3, and the degree here is equal to 1, because the highest power in the numerator is just 1, what I know is that this is equal to a over x plus 1 plus b over x plus 2 plus c over x plus 3. So I can use algebra to find those constants, and then of course I have these expressions, which we saw on the last page, we can integrate fairly simply. Um, in this case, where we have some other polynomial and we have a repeated linear factor, like for example if this was x over x plus 1 x plus 2 squared, this uh, would be treated this way. We'd say that's a over x plus 1 plus b over x plus 2 plus c over x plus 2 squared, like that. So the rules about how you can decompose these are fairly, they're, they're fairly straightforward, and you just have to learn them. And then I'll show you how to set them up and solve for the constants. If we have something called a, a, quad, a, a quadratic factor or an irreducible quadratic factor, then again, it becomes fairly similar, except that then if we have, let's say, x over um, x plus 1, x squared plus 9, this decomposes into a over x plus 1, because x plus 1 is a linear factor. That's a factor that has a highest power of 1. And then the quadratic factor is bx plus c over x squared plus 9. So since the, we have another factor that has an x that, that has an x squared 
in it, we have to uh, we have to decompose that one as uh, x squared plus nine. These also repeat. So if I had let's say x, when I say repeat, I mean it's possible to have a quadratic factor that's raised to a another power. This because if let's say I, instead I were given this problem x squared plus nine squared, this would decompose as a over x plus one plus bx plus c over x squared plus nine plus dx plus e over x squared plus 9 squared. That would be the rule. So for, for, every, for a repeated factor, you, you have to put an extra uh, constant x plus another constant over uh, ascending powers of that factor. We'll, we'll see how that works in, in, future, uh, in future problems. My point here is that the rules are all fairly you know, straightforward. They're just mechanical as to uh, what decomposes into what. So the reason that this is, of course, useful is because we have this very nice table that tells us how to integrate, uh, you know, how to integrate uh, different, uh, different types of simple rational functions. And I, I gave a couple of examples of those earlier, but uh, basically if you know these and you know how to do the decomposition, then you know how to integrate a rational function. So uh, that's the introduction to the topic. Let's uh, go on to, to an actual example.